Hello aspirants, I welcome you all to daily newspaper analysis of Shankar IAS Academy. Today's date is 25th of November 2024. We have taken articles from yesterday's newspaper as well. Now before looking into the list of articles, I have an important announcement for you. It is regarding our pre-storming batch 3 test series for UPSC prelims 2025. It has started its orientation on 21st November, but the test is starting tomorrow that is 26th November. So if you have not enrolled for this particular test so far, that admission is open you can click the link in the description and you can register for this particular test with this note let us just get into the list of articles for today's discussion so in this first article we'll be seeing about chola and the uh, art and architecture part of cholas and in the second article we'll be seeing about thunderstorms and in the third article we'll be seeing in detail about attorney general of india so without any delay let us get into the news article discussion now look at this article from news in frame this article talks about an eminent uh, king from chola empire his name is raja raja one his birthday has been cele celebrated recently in the name of Satya Vila and that is why it has made news today. So from the prelims perspective knowing about Chola art and architecture is very very important and Pallava's art and architecture is also very important. Today we shall focus on Chola alone. So let's start with the features of Chola architecture. See the temple architecture of Chola actually has evolved the Dravidian architecture, temple architecture. So, there will be a Vimana that is a temple tower that will be in a pyramidal shape being narrowing towards the top and there is a Garpagraha where the actual idol is placed for worship and there is also Mandabas that is halls where the musical functions and any kind of dance will be taking place and there is a Shikara which is in the top of the Vimana and this Shikara actually is crowned with a Kalsa. This Kalsa actually has a lot of uh, grains especially the Navadhanya and this Navadhanya actually expires every 12 years and this is why uh, Kumbha Visheham has been done every 12 years in order to replace these grains and there is a reason to keep the Kalsa in the top of the temple there are a lot of spiritual reasons but actually the other side of the reason is to save the seeds from drought and floods and that is why the Kalsa has been placed in the top of the temple with the seeds and this Kalsa also acts as a lightning conductor reducing the impact of lightning surrounding the region of the particular temple. So these are very important facts that you have to remember when it comes to the temple architecture especially Shikara. Apart from this, uh, there is Prahara. Prahara is nothing but the outer uh, wall or the outer uh, high wall that houses a lot of uh, subsidiary shrines. Those are called as the Praharas. They are actually in enclosures and there are also massive uh, gobrams. These gobrams actually function as the gateway to the temple and they use granite in order to bring a grandier look to the temple. So remember all these facts very important. Moving on talking about the examples of Chola architecture. A very good example is Tanjay Brahadeshwara temple. See the very important fact about this particular temple is that the height of this Vimana is 216 feet. Now this 216 is actually compound letters that is present in Tamil language. Okay. So Tamil language actually has 12 vowels and 18 consonants. So compound words is nothing but vowels plus consonants. So there are nearly 216 or the compound letters and based on this only the height of the particular Vimana has been designed. So this is a very important fact and there is a Gangai Gonda Cholapuram. This is also a very good example for the architecture. Thirdly, Ayra Vateswara which is in Darasuram and there is a Nadraja temple in Chidambaram. These four temples are very good example of Chola architecture. Moving on, let us see about other key features of Chola art. Firstly, the bronze sculpture. See, these bronze sculpture, they are made using lost wax technique. See, this lost wax technique is nothing but taking the actual cast of that particular material and the particular material is filled with the alloy or iron later. And this is how the shape of a particular uh, a statue or a particular object is derived. So the main thing that used to this lost wax technique is the Saivism and Vaisnavism. And they have used Panchacholam which is actually 
alloy of five different metals. A very good example for this bronze sculpture is the Narajar statue. Moving on the wall paintings and murals. See, they have a lot of fresco paintings. Those who know about fresco, for those who don't know about what is this fresco painting, it is nothing but using the uh, watercolor when the plaster that has been applied to the wall is fresh. So, while the plaster is drying, the watercolor will also dry and it will be staying intact with the wall itself. So, this is the fresco painting and a lot of fresco painting has been identified around the temple of any uh, Chola temple that we saw priorly. So, this actually depicts a lot of uh, information about uh, religious stories, court life and Tamil culture. Finally, the most important thing is regarding Chola coins. We have two coins issued by two different kings. Firstly, the Raja Raja 1 coin. See, this coin has standing king on one side and the seated goddess on the reverse. So, it, it, it is inscribed in both Sanskrit and Nahari script. And the Rajendra 1 coin, it is actually called the Sri Rajendra or Gangai Kunda Chola coin. And it has the symbols like tiger and fish. A very important thing that you have to remember when it comes to Chola dynasty. So, these are all very important facts that you have to remember. So, firstly, we saw about the temple architecture, then we saw about the art part, especially the bronze, then we saw about coins, and then we saw about the paintings. So, with this understanding, now let us try to solve this particular question. Here, three statements are given, and the correct answer for this particular question is option A, 1 and 2 only. The third statement is actually in the incorrect. So, with these learned points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this news article. The news is that uh, recently a round table conference has been organized by All India uh, Lawyer Forum along with University College London. This has been organized to discuss or to bring together the experts regarding global environmental law. This has been organized in New Delhi. Now, the very important thing about the news is that uh, our Attorney General of India, Mr. R. Venkat Ramani, he has advocated or proposed to establish a global environmental uh, bar to facilitate cross-border legal collaboration and knowledge exchange. So, this is what the very important thing that you have to note from this news article. So, from the brilliance perspective, knowing about Attorney General of India is very important. So, let us revise about them. So, let us start with who is Attorney General of India, AGI. See, he is the highest law officer of the country and he is part of our union executive. So, currently our uh, AGI is Mr. R. Venkat Ramani. Now, talking about the constitutional provisions regarding AGI, see, according to Article 76, AGI should have an office and certain duties were uh, enlisted in Article 76 and according to Article 88, he has the right to speak and participate in parliamentary proceedings, but he cannot have the voting rights. So, whenever a resolution or any kind of uh, bill is passed, he cannot uh, go there and vote, but he can always participate in the parliamentary proceedings. And according to Article 105, he has the privilege and immunity similar to the member of the parliament. These three are very, very important uh, constitutional provisions that you have to remember when it comes to AGI. Moving on, let us see about the appointment and eligibility. He, see, he is appointed by the President of India and talking about his eligibility, he should be a citizen of India and he should be qualified to be Supreme Court judge and he should be an eminent jurist in the President's opinion. See, here in order to serve as a Supreme Court judge, that person should have uh, served as a judge in High Court for at least 5 years or an advocate for at least 10 years. So, only after all these, he can be qualified to be an Attorney General of India. So, have this basic understanding. Now, moving on, let us see about the term and removal when it comes to AGI. See, he actually serves under the pleasure of the president, meaning the term is not fixed by our constitution and the president, he can remove the AGI whenever he requires and also and also there is no specific procedure for the removal of AGI. Moving on, let us quickly go through the functions of AGI. See, he advises the government on any legal matter that has been referred by our president or the government. Apart from this, he represents the government of India in Supreme Court and High Court 
cases when the case is against the government itself. Thirdly, he appears in Supreme Court in, with reference made under Article 143 by our President. The President has a special power under this Article 143. He can ask Supreme Court regarding he can ask advice to Supreme Court regarding any constitutional uh, provision or any law that is regarding to the constitution. So while such a case is being discussed from the government side, uh, the person who will be appearing in the court is our AGI. Okay? Now moving on, he also performs the legal duty assigned by the president and he discharges functions under the constitution or other laws. So, so, these are all certain powers and functions with respect to AGA. However, there are certain limitations. Let us see them one by one. Firstly, he cannot advise or act against the government. And he actually requires government of India approval for any private legal matter or dictatorship. So, if in case uh, AGI is going to just uh, appear for any criminal case, he has to get the permission of the government. And he cannot... Uh, give legal advice to any minister, any kind of government official, any secretariat or anybody. This is to ensure the unbiasedness and partisanship when it comes to AGI. So, these are all very important facts that you have to remember. So far, we saw about the constitutional provisions of uh, AGI. Then we saw what are all the functions of AGI. We saw about his uh, appointment, removal and we saw about uh, the limitations. So, with these learned points, now let us try to solve a preliminary question with respect to AGI. Let me read out the question for you. Attorney General of India and Solicitor General of India are the only officers of the government who are allowed to participate in the meeting of the Parliament of India. See here, uh, the assistance to Attorney General of India is the Solicitor General of India. Now, second statement says, according to the Constitution of India, the Attorney General of India submits his resignation when the government which appointed him resigns. Now, both the questions are very tricky and the correct answer for this particular question is option D, neither 1 nor 2. Both the statements are incorrect. So, with these learned two points, now let us move on to the next news article discussion. Now, look at this news article. The news is that due to storm bird on Saturday, England has faced a lot of issues like power outrage, the communi communication has been cut down and the railway line and roads were closed. So, this is what the news article is about. So, from the prelims perspective, let us revise about thunderstorms. So, let us start with what is thunderstorm. See, it is actually a rain shower and it is a very temporary disturbance with th thunder and lightning. So, it turns into severe storm when there is hail, high winds or even tornadoes. And during the thunderstorm, there will be lightning that will be heating the air around the region and it will cause a shocking wave which is nothing but a thunder. So, thunderstorm, it is accompanied by rain, lightning and mm -hmm. a thunder. So, have this basic understanding. When this just intensifies, it turns into tornado. Now, let us see how this particular uh, uh, thunderstorm actually forms. See, it has three stages. Firstly, cumulus, secondly, mature and thirdly, dissipating. Now, for the first stage, that is the cumulus to form, we require certain things which is moisture, instability and the lifting mechanism. So, moisture, it will be collected from the ocean nearby. So, when we talk about instability, it is nothing but uh, the change in pressure and temperature when it comes to altitude. So, if the atmosphere is unstable, a lot of uh, frictional force will be reduced leading to upliftment of a particular. So, this is what we call as instability. And thirdly, there should be a lifting mechanism. This happens when a uh, cold front and a warm front actually meets. So, these three are the main conditions that is required to formation of this cumulus uh, which later turns into mature stage of thunderstorm and then dissipates. So, if you can see here in the developing stage there will be a cumulus cloud that will be rising and this air will be warm and moist. So, in the, in the mature stage this warm and moist air will reach very considerable height up to 40,000 feet and here the air will be cold, right? So, when this warm air and cold air actually meets, they start to condense and form the rain, they form hail and even in severe cases, they will be turning into tornadoes when the actual cloud touches the ground. So, there will be a revolving column. This is one we call as tornado, okay? 
So this is regarding the mature stage. So in the dissipating stage, there will be downdraft. This downdraft actually happens because the warm air will lose the energy to actually rise. So when the warm air will not rise, there will be no condensation and there will be no precipitation. Okay. So when the downdraft actually exceeds the updraft of the air, the dissipation stage actually starts. So in this particular mature stage, you have to remember that there will be rain accompanied with thunder and wind. Now let us see about the hazard that this thunderstorm could happen, that this thunderstorm could occur. So the first thing is the lightning. It can affect human being. It can even burn. Uh, it can even cause forest fires and it can even burn a particular tree. And there can be flash floods that can be turned into urban flooding causing the destruction to life and property, disconnectivity of the roads and railway links and etc. And there will be a gusty winds. This can even lead to dis dislocation of cars, trees and houses. And there can be occurrence of hailstorms due to the temperature inversion that happens. Hailstorm also has the ability to cause huge destruction to infrastructure and human being. So these are the hazards that can be happened when it comes to thunderstorms. Moving on, we shall see about the severe thunderstorms. See, when hail is more than or equal to one inch diameter, we'll call it as severe thunderstorm. And when the wind has 57.5 mph, we call it as a severe thunderstorm. And if there is a tornado is present, we call it as severe thunderstorm. These are the criteria for the particular thing. Now let us see about the geographical distribution of the thunderstorms. So it is very rare in polar region, especially greater than 50 degree north or south. And it is very common in temperate and tropical zones. In especially the Britain, it is in the temperate zone. Okay. And in India, it is very frequent during the pre-monsoon and in the monsoon. And it is very common in northeastern India, Odisha, West Bengal and Western Ghats. So just remember all these facts. Now we shall see about the safety and government measure that has been taken when it comes to thunderstorms. See, IMD, it actually gives the real-time alert in terms of uh, uh, any kind of dissemination, IMD will be taken care of. And there is a particular app called the mini app from which the notification of thunderstorm can be get in the real-time. And there is the NDMA safety guidelines that will be issued once IMD uh, issues an alert for thunderstorms. Apart from this, awareness campaigns will be uh, undertaken in the vulnerable area during the off-seasons. So, so this will help in easy and speeder evacuation of the people from the region, especially during the very harmful times like thunderstorms. So with this understanding, let us try to solve this particular question. Consider the following statements about thunderstorm. Every thunderstorm is accompanied by lightning. They commonly occur in polar region. The Domini app is developed by NDMA for lightning alerts. So here the correct answer for the question is option A only one. All the second and third statement is actually incorrect. Now before ending, I have another announcement for you. October 2024 editorial analysis monthly marathon has been posted in our uh, YouTube and you can click the link in the description and view the video. So with this we came to the end of the news article discussion. If you like the video, hit like, do comment and don't forget to subscribe to Shankaraya's Academy YouTube channel. Now thank you so much for listening.